Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I am here to talk through the most common HR questions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is so much information being shared each day that it's easy to be overwhelmed. My goal is to simplify some of the requirements for businesses and to help you identify focus areas and priorities. To start off, let me tell you a little bit about me and my background. My name is Sarah Musburger. I have about 20 years of experience within HR and have worked with a number of different industries as an HR consultant with Alternative HRD. In addition to my consulting work, I also serve as the HR Director for Banner Associates here in Brookings. With that, let's go ahead and get started. First, an overview. The Families First Coronavirus Response Act was signed into law on March 18th, 2020. The law is effective from April 1st to December 31st of 2020. This law applies to all businesses under 500 employees, with some guidelines that may exempt employers with fewer than 50 employees from certain parts of this law. This is specifically for instances in which providing the leave benefits would jeopardize the viability of the business. There are a number of businesses in Brookings that employ less than 50 employees, so I'd like to touch on this exemption just briefly. The Department of Labor's guidance directs small businesses seeking this exemption to document internally why their business qualifies. It does not require a filing with the Department of Labor. It is imperative that businesses keep the health and well being of their staff, customers, guests, or clients as their primary goal as they navigate the COVID 19 situation. What this means is that you are actively encouraging employees to stay home if they are sick. Adjust your workspaces so that you can provide social distancing for employees and customers. Require employees to practice respiratory etiquette and hand hygiene. Perform routine environmental cleaning for all workspaces and services. Let's go ahead and jump into some questions. May an employer take temperatures of their employees each day to ensure the health and safety of their staff, customers, guests, and or clients? Under normal circumstances, the answer would be no. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, yes, employers may take temperatures. The temperature reading should be kept confidential and the person administering the temperature check should be trained on this procedure. Ensure that there is social distancing and keep people at least six feet apart when they are standing in line to have their temperatures taken. Bear in mind that not all people with COVID-19 have fevers and not all people with fevers have COVID-19. If an employee calls in sick, May employers ask about whether the employee's symptoms are consistent with COVID-19? Yes, but only ask about the symptoms related to COVID-19. This includes fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, and sore throat. If the employee exhibits these symptoms, it's appropriate to ask if they have been in communication with their healthcare provider. Not all individuals are allowed to be tested, However, clinics are set up to triage these patients over the phone for related symptoms. If the employee is advised to self-quarantine or self-isolate based on their symptoms, they can usually obtain some form of documentation from the clinic to substantiate this. If an employee is confirmed to have COVID-19, what should an employer do? First, this employee would qualify for paid leave under the FFCRA. Second, the employer should inform fellow employees of their possible exposure to COVID-19 in the workplace, but maintain confidentiality as required by law. What this means is that you are not able to share that person's name. Employees that have been exposed to a coworker with confirmed COVID-19 should refer to the CDC's guidance on conducting a risk assessment. Would an employee who is afraid of coming to work and contracting COVID-19 be eligible for paid sick leave? The answer is no. This is not included as one of the six qualifiers for paid sick leave under the FFCRA. However, 
if the employee's fear is directly related to a serious medical condition or an underlying health condition that puts them into the high risk category, then they may qualify for normal FMLA for the employers that fall under that criteria. Here is a short checklist of items that I put together for businesses, things to keep in mind. Number one, distribute and post the required notice. Field employee questions and practice over communication with staff during this time. This is a time of great uncertainty. So employees are feeling stressed, business owners are feeling stressed. Communication definitely is a, a positive way of easing some of that stress and anxiety. So I would definitely encourage you to keep those lines of communication open. Number three, ensure that your workplace is safe as defined by OSHA guidelines. Four, identify remote work options whenever possible. Number five, establish a process for addressing employees who may become or appear ill at work. Establish a process for employees to request time off in relation to FFCRA. Communicate expectations with the utilization of this leave. Be clear about how these hours will be paid. Establish a way to track FFCRA hours and keep detailed records. And start identifying a re-entry plan for employees to return to work and ensure their safety. Although we aren't sure when this will happen, it's good to start getting prepared for that. Several government agencies have provided resources to help workers and employers navigate workplace issues related to COVID-19. So I've provided some of those resources here. Now, the FFCRA and the CARES Act are new for every business. Unfortunately, that means that there's still new guidance coming out every day to clarify the application of these laws and how businesses need to respond. So, in essence, we are all learning together. There are no experts. But keep in mind that you know your business and the unique challenges that this poses for your business. Um, rely on not only the Brookings Economic Development Corporation and, and their way of providing these webinars as an additional support for businesses, but there's a lot of value to be had in businesses supporting one another in sharing resources and information, um, helpful tips, um, guidance in that regard. Um, certainly anyone who's listening to this webinar, if you have additional questions or want more detailed resources, I'm happy to share information with you as well. So with that, that concludes the webinar. Um, I would like to take just a moment to applaud the small businesses in our community. This is a very difficult time for businesses in general, but especially small businesses. Your tenacity to push through this time hasn't gone unnoticed. Uh, luckily, the Brookings community, I think everyone wants to support our local businesses, and so we'll continue to do that and keep pushing through. And thank you very much to the Brookings Economic Development Corporation for allowing me to provide this webinar. Again, if you have additional questions um, or want more detailed resources, I'm happy to share those with you. I have some sample forms or some question and answer summaries that may be helpful. Um, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to share those with you anytime. Thanks so much and have a great day.